everybody, it's Josie with Ozark Mountain Goats. It is a really warm day here in the Ozarks. In fact, we had thick fog till probably about 11 o'clock this morning. Uh, the heat index is above 90 and it's just really icky outside. So I decided to do something indoors today. And when we were talking about what we wanted to have for dinner tonight, I suggested that uh, I make up some noodles. So um, that's what my plan is for this afternoon. So to make some uh, homemade chicken and noodles with good stock, you wanna start with some chicken. And I just happen to have four frozen chicken thighs, so that's what I'm gonna be using today. Years ago, I would use a whole fryer. And um, I found that over time, I just don't, want that much chicken in my chicken and noodles. So four thighs is plenty for me and that'll make a nice big stock pot. The noodles that I make are very, oh, I guess you'd say old school. I learned it from my grandmother and so there's not too many fancy ingredients in it. In fact, very few ingredients. And I'm using some things that I had uh, in the freezer and downstairs in our pantry. I thought I would use some stuff up. Uh, I've got four chicken thighs that I'm going to use uh, to make some stock with, but also to um, add the meat portion to this meal. And then I've got a quart of turkey broth um, that was down in our pantry. And last Thanksgiving, after we had fixed a turkey, we boiled the carcass for, gosh, several hours and got some amazing broth off of it. Well, I've used all but this one last quart, so I'm gonna use that today. I've also got a couple of uh, quarts of frozen chicken broth. Um, when I make chicken casserole, there's usually some, ex some leftover broth that I save, and so I'm gonna use that today, besides the broth that I'll get from boiling the chicken. And the only other ingredients you need are some eggs. These are farm fresh eggs that we got from our neighbor, some flour and some salt, and that's it. What you want to do now is, once it reaches the simmer, turn the heat down so it's going to stay like this um, at a constant simmer for maybe 15 to 20 minutes or so. And I also take this time to kind of skim off some of the foam because you don't really need that or want that in your chicken. So we'll just get some of that off of there. So I've got my chicken going in the stock pot and I also wanted to mention that if you choose to add some vegetables you can do that. You could add um, carrots or celery, parsley, onions, anything like that to give your broth a little bit more of a vegetable flavor. We never did that at my in my family so I'm just going to use chicken and water as my only ingredients for my stock. Um, but first, let me show you what tools we're going to need before we make our noodles. I've got my trusty knife here. This was actually my grandmother's knife, and um, after she was finished with it, she gave that to my mom, and my mom gave it to me. Also, you're going to need a scraper, which really helps with loosening up um, any stuck dough that is on your uh, work surface. And I've got my rolling pin, and I've got a little fork. So the first thing I'm going to do is make a well. I've got about two and a half, two and three quarter cup of flour here. So I'm going to make a well and into that I'll be adding eggs. So you just crack your eggs right into the well. Boy, these are good eggs too. Our neighbor has chickens and uh, we get some delicious eggs from him. Then you're just going to break these up and whip them up a little bit. Into that I'm going to add some salt. And 
and now I'm going to start adding in some flour. Just do this a little bit of a time at a time and I know you are going to make quite a big mess but believe me it'll all come together in the end and uh, it'll make some great great noodle dough. get it to where it can be handled. I'm going to knead the dough for just a minute or so. Get it real stretchy. So basically you just push with your the heel of your hand and then fold it over and you just continue doing that as you work this dough. dough rolled out. It's going to be fairly thin. At least that's the way I make mine. Make sure that nothing's sticking anywhere and then I take my knife and I make slices. Because what I'm going to do with these is pile them on top of each other. So mine are probably maybe two and a half inches or so wide. And then I start stacking them on top of each other. I want to make sure I've got enough flour in there that they don't stick together. I usually try to pick a bigger one to leave on the bottom and the rest of them go on top. Just like that. Because any extra flour that you've got you can always shake off and discard. So I tend to have plenty of flour when it comes to making noodles. Actually, flour is what makes your good broth. All right. Then I just take my knife and kind of slide it under there so that if anything is stuck to the counter, it'll come off. Then it's just a matter of cutting your noodles. And the width just depends on what you like. But I just cut them like this and you can see there's all these individual noodles laying there and I shake them up and kind of separate them after I get them all cut. I'm just gonna spread these out over here and they can begin drying while I cut the next batch. Okay, we're halfway done. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll out the other half of these noodles and when that's done, I'll catch up with you and we'll go from there. So as you can see, I've got a pile of noodles laying here. They've been drying for quite a while while the chicken's been cooking. And uh, but now I'm gonna take that chicken out of the pot. And uh, as I mentioned before, I like to poach my chicken. Um, typically for about 20 minutes once it comes to a simmer and then after 20 minutes I'll shut the fire off and just let it sit there in the hot uh, broth. Um, I used to years ago just boil the heck out of my chicken but I don't really like to do that anymore. I like a softer um, juicier chicken and so poaching does a much better job 
Um, otherwise, when you cook your chicken too long or too hard, it gets stringy and it can be more tough. So anyway, this is finished poaching and we're going to get it on a plate and let it cool off. I've got my chicken deboned and my stock pot is now up to a boil so I'm going to start adding my noodles and the one thing I wanted to say first is that I don't separate uh, the fat from the broth I use it all the fat is what gives it flavor and that's the way my family's always made it unless there's something really funky uh, floating around in the broth I leave it as it is so I'm going to start adding the noodles now and uh, you want to be sure and add them a little at a time and stir constantly so that they don't clump together and stick Okay, my noodles have been cooking for about 15 minutes or so and they're good and tender so I'm going to go ahead and stir my chicken in. Um, the chicken is done so it doesn't need to really cook anymore. Um, if, it, if your chicken was just a little underdone or pink and you know you wanted it to cook some more that's perfectly fine to do that but since my chicken is done and my noodles are done I'm just going to fold it together and uh, let it sit like this. They are going to thicken up some as they begin to cool uh, and there you have it. That's homemade chicken and noodles. You can't hardly beat it. Now at my house it's a carb fest so we serve this with mashed potatoes and usually some corn on the side. Can't get any better than that. All right that's it. Um, thank you for watching. Please like us and, and subscribe and we will catch you later.